got us a mini split here. They're nice for certain situations, but I don't know. I just don't like working on them because they're kind of a hassle, it seems. Here's what I've noticed so far. My uh, lines are not really temping at all. Sounds like the compressor's cranking along. I don't really feel any major heat coming out of it. It's running on the inside, and it's just right there literally on the other side of this wall. It's kind of warm over here, so it's hard to tell if that's actual heat coming from the unit or if it's coming just off the wall. I'm going to get the gauges out and see if it's got a refrigerant issue or what. It's not really cold at all. Something's odd going on. I'm wondering if it's a leak. It's... A lot of oil on that there, I noticed. Seems like more than just what you would have spread on it. Oh, that ain't good. So the itsy bitty spider goes up the hose and bam, negative 10. At this time, we're going to, uh, I don't know, I, I about feel like cracking loose the, the flares because they're, they're almost always the leak source. What sucks is it very easily could be on the other side inside. It feels like it's on there fairly tight. Probably cranked on with a 14 foot wrench. Oh, come on, really? I didn't even hardly turn it. Yeah, I don't think this one got flared very good. I think we've got a problem there, Chuck. Uh, that could be a problem. You've just lost me on all flare joints now. Might as well just go ahead and just take these off. When I see something like that, you just lost me at, uh-oh. Now that one looks like it was somewhat done right. So did we just maybe kind of get it close and then forgot that they didn't do it? I mean, what's, what exactly is the story here? I don't know. I mean, I feel rough edges, so it didn't get oiled. I can about guarantee you that. Makes me want to just go ahead and chop it off and redo it, but I only got so much line there to work with. So my Master Cool Eccentric Kit, and that's the part number there. Not a fancy tool kit. The burring tool, cutter, nice simple flaring block where I screwed up and punctured the wrong side twice. Missed on that one and wrong side on that one. But it does a good flare every time. It's eccentrical, meaning it wobbles it. Not rocket science, it's been around for a while. They say, when in doubt, cut it out. Just cut this little piece off here and we'll just start over. Unfortunately, I really don't want to yank it off the wall to know this, because honestly, I don't have the tool to hold the thing, unit up there and I don't have anybody helping me. There's that. Guys, this is just very basic right here. It's a deburring tool. You go around a few times and get that edge corner out of there. Get out, which I think we got it. Got it there like that. Now, chuck this turkey up. Back it out so you can see it swabbling, wobbling there. Should be able to see it wobbling. There's a Yellow Jacket one guys really like. I tried using it. That thing was, I didn't like it. And I like Yellow Jacket tools, but that, that Yellow Jacket one, I did not like it at all. And then the Hillmore's got a nice one. It's got a little finger thing that kind of helps you get it perfectly flat. Because I played with this particular tool multiple times and tried it flat, not flat, a little bit over. Because my old tool used to have to go over a little bit. And, uh, not so much with this one. So let's get this thing lined up. It's kind of awkward where I got it at. You got all this rubber crap in the way. This is how you end up screwing up your flaring block. There we go. Got the stitches out. So that's kind of nice. Let's go ahead and... Some people might oil it. 
I'll do that when I flare it, but I don't really do it when I'm, or I'm not flaring it, when I'm actually tightening it down. And then it should pop right there. Here, click. It quit doing its thing. So this is not anything new for some of those out there. But obviously, and it looks like I might have moved a little bit on my flaring ball out there, so I may have to straighten that out a little bit and choke it up a little bit and get it. Looks like it might have got it. Yeah, it actually looks like a pretty nice 45 degree flare to me. The centrical point, purpose of that is to slowly round it out versus my old yellow jacket that still works great from 90 something. Just go straight in there. Got this right here. Let's see how it fits up on that. Look at that. Look at those potatoes. See how the head fits perfect on that flare? Yeah, that's the way it should be. Let's go ahead and get some oil on that, or we can put some nylog. Which, nylog's bad. It'll cause it to leak. I don't believe that. So we're just gonna put a little nylog on the back side. And we're just gonna rotate that a little bit so that it spins on it. Now you could put a little coating here on the face surface so that it smooths out, but some manufacturers say no, 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 don't do that. This one here, put a little bit on that one, same thing, pull it away a little bit. Spin it, look at that, fancy Nancy. Now the face of that brass a little funky like a monkey. Let's give it a little kiss here and see how this goes. I'm gonna put this on with another video I did. It was the same freaking thing. So anyhow, let's get this thing on there. Like I said, that one, you know what? That one there, if you look at the flare, it actually mushrooms out past the head a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm not going to deal with it. Um, once my name goes on it, because I just seen some posts today, somebody's seen a wire sticking out of the top of a condenser, and I don't know what you guys are charging to fix stupidity, but. Generally, if you got wires sticking out of the unit, and you're going to charge them that much money that they have to think about fixing it. It doesn't take anything to tie up the wire. Yeah, look at that. I'm sitting there trying to do that, and it's it's not even wanting to work on that flare. Barely fits in my pocket on it. Yep. It's a little goobered, even if you wipe the goober out of it. I mean, it's not horrible, but you can see some scarring in there. I'd, I'd be afraid that's gonna cause a, cause a leak. And most of these mini splits do not have any filter dryers in them. So it's gotta be clean. Gotta be clean, Captain, clean. There we go. Hopefully I can get the tool in there because that's hell of a bend. They would have used a bending tool, it could have got right in there. Unfortunately, it, you have to try to wiggle this thing back to make some room for the block and everything to get on there. That might be as good as I'm gonna be able to get it, I don't know. Because it's got a through there. It's not what I like to do. It ain't how I like to do it. I'm gonna have to loosen it up. Try to slide it on, eyeball it. All because we got goober tiff, goober, goobertistic going on here. No reason for the goobertistic. Let's see if we can eyeball that while it's inside the thing. That's the only thing bad about this device. Now, hopefully, I can get it out once I got the freaking thing on there. I may not be able to. That would suck. Okay, let's go ahead and get that there. There we go. 
Looks flush and flat to me. Yeah, one you can actually hook on your uh, drill. Always go a couple extra turns, make sure it's completely rounded it out. My own personal preference. You're not going to hurt it any because it's not compressing it. Yeah, it's going to be really tight to get it off here. There we go. There we go. And it fits. Okay, so it's going to ship. Send it. Get this honker on there first. Yeah, this is a brain dead repair, guys, but unfortunately it was a brain dead hookup, and for some reason, you know, here we are doing it again. So obviously it ain't too brain dead. Kind of hold it in place that way you got the mating surface flat against it not offset or anything like that and then we'll hit it with a torque wrench i use a digital hill mower i went through a bunch of different books quarter three eighths half five eighths three quarter 11 pounds 27 pounds 20, 39 pounds 55 75 pounds I like this because I didn't have to have one of the weird heads, but anything bigger than what I've seen, I won't be able to work with it. It's the only thing downside on it. Plus, it's digital, so if you drop it, it could possibly damage it. But so far, it's been good enough. I don't use it that often. And because I don't use it that often, I take the batteries out of it because the last thing I want is want them to corrode. Screw my tool up. Oh, that's the reason why I have put a nickel in there for a reason. That nickel fits perfect into that groove. And I use that marker there to kind of mark where on the cap you need to put it at before you lock it into place. So you kind of push in and turn, a little nickel works out great. And since I've already got this programmed, 3 8 is 27 pounds, so we'll do the memory until we hit 27 pounds. There it is. Let's go ahead and do this 3 8 You can see the you can see the uh, bar graph there getting closer, and hear the audible. Okay, we're good there on that one. Jump up to the seven eighths. I mean, it says seven eighths, but really it's closer to three sixths. I don't know what you want to call that, because I can go much bigger. That one there, I'd say it's closer to three quarter, and because that's really five eighths copper, but it says seven eighths here, because that's plumbing fitting, I bet you. Let's go with the five eighths, which is 55 foot pounds. I just have this funny feeling it's not the bigger one. There we go. One more time, double check it. They really did not reinforce this thing very good. Okay, we're good. Now, unfortunately, do we go inside and check the inside stuff? It appears to me that it pops through the side of the wall. We'll hop on a ladder. We'll get up there and see if it's punched through. I think that's what it is. I 
Unfortunately, I don't trust it. I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart, and double check them. So there's the drain line. It kind of just a little bit kind of gets into the drain pipe there. That one looks better. Maybe there was just a mistake made down below. A little bit there and smear on the back side. That's that's the part that really does the work, you know? And get a little little smooshed, because as that smooshed up against there, yeah, that's right, smooshed. Smooshed is a word here in the north. Just gotta smoosh it together a little bit. I guarantee you this much. It's better to have some nylog on there to have, than it is to have no oil at all. I guarantee you that. And you can take that to the bank and deposit it. Yeah, that's one of them ones right there where I don't know if I trust that. I've done it both directions. Yeah, I don't like how tight it's getting. Yeah. Something tells me that was damaged. Yeah, that was damaged. It's not tightening up correctly. Something's not right with it. Let's just put it that way. I don't know if it was crushed. What exactly is going on, but it ain't working. So it's new, guys. Here's exactly the reason why we've got that little groove right there. So you can put that flare fitting right there. Let's go ahead and cut this off and we'll redo it. Which, luckily, it's just right out here. It's one of the easier ones I've seen. That one's just jackery. That's got jackery to it. Go ahead and bend this backwards a little bit so we don't get the flare or the uh, shavings in there. Yeah, guys, this right here is the DJ Osmos action camera. I've had way too many problems with GoPro. GoPro is garbage. They constantly overheat, shut off, lock up. I had all kinds of problems with the 7, and I'm hearing the same problems with the 9. If you run the ISO higher than 1600, you will get snowy picture. Like, uh, you'll get noise in the picture, which is what they call it. That there is a beautiful flare. It's what's nice about this tool is, you know, any Tim, D Tim, Dick, Harry, and Bob can freaking get a good flare if they just follow the normal procedures. Now, yep, there, I, I usually make a mistake and forget to put this stupid nut on there. But we've got that juiced on the back side. We got a little smidget on the flare head. Let's go ahead and get that back together and see how that does now. That's 22 pounds, I'm stopping there. I really don't want to jack with this at all. I really, really, really don't. Well, it looks fairly okay. Put a little lube on the back side of that nut. There we go. Not the way I wanted to do it. That's the way we're gonna do it. That will fit on there like that. Just gotta do pressure test yet. Make sure there's no leaks. Yeah, she's hotter than a cooked goose. Rain or hot, and no protection. Ain't that pathetic? This thing wasn't smart enough, out of all the things it does, wasn't smart enough to protect itself from running in a vacuum. Not very impressed. You got a discharge sensor here that had been hotter than heck. It should have known that that wasn't right. Ridiculous. Got outdoor sensors, all that crap, and it didn't have any idea. I'm not seeing any other ports in here. I am just worked on one of these not too long ago and freaking didn't have one. Usually they hide one in here. This one's actually got an inverter board though. The other one didn't have one.
Pump, 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 pump it up. One of the few times I actually pull one hose. I usually don't like it, but it's all we can do today. Guess we'll put it like that. Got my plug all there so people can complain about it. So-called widow maker. I actually got a fuse in mine. Got the light there so I can actually tell whether it's 120 or 240 or 277. Been using it since I started. That's how everybody did it when I started. I have yet to blow up anything. Uh, the only thing you can screw up is when you get into the bigger commercial stuff and you're on 460 and you aren't paying attention. And uh, you hook onto one leg into ground and you're going to get 277 in your pumpy. And it's going to go smoky. But she's a dropping, which is a good thing. We can get past some of the glare there. We'll let this thing run until we get to the happy zone and uh, we'll recharge this thing back, which looks like it holds 5.73 pounds of our 410A. At least it's uh, current refrigerant. This is a heat pump. Got us a reversing valve right in there. So we gotta make sure we get this back insulated up. Don't wanna lose any heat out here. Hee <laughs> hee ha ha. But we're cruising on down. Do a valve off just to see if she kinda holds where she's at. See how much how fast it goes back up. It's already slowing down, that's a good sign. Let her do its thing. You can see a big difference between pulling on a compressor and just a line set. We're at 16 minutes, 15 minutes and we're just at 600 500 ish area then all of a sudden the compressor lets go of a big refrigerant bubble that's trapped or moisture bubble that's in the oil and then you know as you valve it off there you can see why it doesn't matter that you pull it to 500 it's whether you stay under it which has been preached multiple times but there's a lot of people out there that still don't realize that so i think that's the reason why we still mention it quite often yeah there's a thousand still rising up this thing sucked in moisture, unfortunately. Like I said, they don't run filter dryers on these. They must have miracle oil in it or something because uh, there's no way to dry it out. And a vacuum pump's only gonna get so much of it. I have a feeling we're gonna stall out. There's just uh, too much moisture in the oil that's just not gonna let go. Not gonna let go. We've got that all back together up there on top. Everything's tucked in. Uh, it should drain into that pipe now. I got it wire tied over to it so it can't move away. The pipe comes down to there, so it's draining out down there, which is good. It means it's past all the other stuff. That is some funky looking. I haven't seen that MC cable, shielded MC cable, I guess. It's kind of looks like a antenna wire for like a CB radio or something crazy. Things happen. It's been corrected. We're getting her vacuum. We're going to recharge to get these people back up and going. We're at 30 minutes, down to 300. Give it a little turn, get the stuff out from under the ball valve and see whether it holds very good or not. Much better than what it was, but it's still rising up rather quickly. And it blows past the 500 magic number at five microns a second, loss. So we'll have to give this a little bit longer. It comes out to about five pounds, 11 ounces area. So we've got that weight in. Need to let it set for a little bit since we had to dump liquid all in there. Give it a chance to boil off. And then uh, we'll kick this thing on and see whether or not she runs, which it should because it was pumping really good in a nice negative like it was doing. And as always made sure not to remove our Schrader core tool uh, before we got pressure in it. You buy a good vacuum gauge, it don't matter if you get pressure on it. I haven't even had an oil log symbol on that thing. I don't, but maybe once if that. It's uh, definitely a quality difference. I've never had any problems other than one, one failure after about, what, eight years? It finally started acting up and uh, the owner actually took care of it and fixed it for like 35 bucks. 
completely uh, rebuild it for me. So that's got something to say about uh, the company. That's a good company. Can't say he'll do that on everything, but he took care of me and not knowing, you know, I didn't, didn't say who I was or anything like that. I just said, hey, I uh, love your tool and it's got problems and what can you do for me? And uh, that's what he ended up doing. From what I heard, I found it on the on the um, forums. That's how I found out about it. And uh, that's how I decided to buy it because people had said he had done that before. Whether he wants to have anybody know that or not, I don't know. But all the same, I think it's a testament to the, the way he backs his product, which I'm pretty impressed. Or there she blows. I don't think we're working on 134A, so let's go up to 410. 55 evap and dropping. Give her a little bit here and see what it does. But I think we might have gotten it. Nothing uh, reflaring all the flares and uh, evacuating until you got all the moisture back out and uh, recharging it back to factory spec and it works again. Really don't like it when I see the evaporator dropping that low, but I have no control over it. That's getting worse. It should be nice to know what the high side was doing, but they didn't put a port on for that. We're not overly impressed here. Hopefully it starts to come back up here. Like I said, just turned it on. Watch and see what it does. I'm pretty sure this was an EXV. 20 degree evaporator. Now she's starting to speed up. I suspect that, you know, it starts seeing that cold temperature and it'll try to overcome it. Let's charge the spec. Guess we'll run it and we'll find out. I'm not going to recreate the wheel. I'm going to put this thing back together and uh, we'll see how it does. At this point, there ain't nothing more I can do with it. I guess we'll find out if it doesn't work. Not a whole lot you can do. This side of the building's pretty much out of the sun. So we're about 90 out here, it looks like. Indoor temperature is 75. And up there, we're at 58, 57, 56. So 66, 76. About 19 degrees, which seems a little low, but it's also on high speed. Well, this is one of those things about I don't like about the mini splits. Ain't a whole lot you can do about it. it. Ain't like you can hook a computer up to this and tell it, hey, I want you to open up this far, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. There's absolutely no control over it. It does its own thing. It's got some basics that you can do. I'm just not a fan of it. I don't like the way the evaporators get after they've been running for you know a while and not being properly cleaned. They're great for when you don't have any other options, you don't have duct work, stuff like that. Not saying they're junk, I just don't like them. Uh, I'll, I'll take a regular system any day. But the moral of the story is, do proper for layers, properly lubricate, properly torque, and uh, you won't have any problems. Other than that, that wraps this one up, guys. If you like the video, want to see more like it, Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.